I'm Corinne. I'm Thomas. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Chill Spot. I'm Corinne. And this is Dre. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Everybody survived all the snow that we had in Missouri. All the snow that was in Missouri is compared to nothing to the snow that got in Iowa. Before we get too far in, though, let's talk about our shirts. Yes. Subscribe to CNA TV if you haven't. That's what I'm here to remind you. Yep. Subscribe. And then we want to like, comment, and share. And get notifications. That's these little red bells are. Yeah, so make sure you hit on it. And we're going to wear these throughout the month to remind you. So every time you see these, just remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to CNA TV. On YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, yes, for sure. On YouTube, subscribe to CNA TV. Yes. Hit like on those videos. Get comments on there. I love going in there and reading the different comments. Um, I have seen some negative ones. And again, I think I've said this before. I'm not going to take them off because I feel like that's just dialogue that happens in the industry. So I just address them and hope to be able to move forward. And if I guess if I get in a point where there's a negative comment, I'm just in a rut, I'll just stop. Right. But it's worked so far. So, so right. far so good. The, I'm kind of like you. The negative comments don't really bother me because if it's something that I can learn from yeah, yeah. and improve, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. You know? Yeah, I agree. Well, and I feel like if... It's just, it's perception. One thing that my executive director used to say to me that I used to hate, which is so true though, perception is reality. This person may be viewing the situation as negative, but that doesn't necessarily mean that right. it is. Right. And everybody has different personal opinions mm -hmm. and my experience may be different from your experience oh, yeah. and it's all how we, we look at it, but we're just here to have a good time. And, um, both yeah. of us, yeah, and, <laughs> and both of us agree it's about promoting our wonderful profession that both of us in and to spread the word that NACA is here for you. And if you, um, you know, take advantage of that, kudos to you for yeah. spreading the word and growing our wonderful profession. For so, sure. Yep. So today we're actually going to talk about respect. Does it remind you of a song? Yes. Yeah, me Just too. a little. <laughs> <laughs> Dance party. So yes, we're going to talk about 10 things that you can do to earn respect or continue to get respect that don't really take much talent at all. That's right. They're freebies. Yeah, they are. They are. They are. Yep. And respect's such a big thing for me. So I love this one. Yeah. So the first one is really being on time. <gasps> You know, I mean, if you show up for work, anything, you know. exactly. I mean, you need to be on time and I am one like, okay, I need to be there at six in my mind. I need to be there at 545. And if I tell myself 545, I'm still going to get there early because you never know what's going to happen. Right. And it is such a reflection mm -hmm. of you if you're late. Right. That's and some right. people like me don't forget about it. If, if someone shows up to a meeting late, I will tell you, I'm going to be sitting in the meeting the whole entire time, <laughs> like, oh, like this. <laughs> that late person over there. <laughs> and now they want to talk, talk the whole entire meeting, even though they were late. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's also respect. Yeah. Uh, respect. It's but respectful to be on time. Yes. And it's, um, it's responsibility too, that you're taking, you know, yeah. you got a job, be there on time. The next one is work ethic. And I know you yourself have a very strong work ethic. So do I. You yeah. know? So that that's important. It, and I do hear, I feel like I'm going to interject in every single one, but you know, something we hear in our industry, every generation is talking about the work ethic of the next mm -hmm. generation. Stop, you know, go to work, do what's expected of you. And I also say, do a little more. I've always, that's mm -hmm. what I've always done. And you know, people are always commending me. You have a really good work ethic. Go to work, do what's expected, and then do a little more. Mm -hmm. And that little more just becomes habit, so it becomes more and more that you do. But yes, I'm so big mm -hmm. on work ethic. You know, I, don't, I do not tolerate just standing around, being unproductive, especially when working in a nursing home and the residents essentially are paying our paychecks. Right. So you are stealing from them when you mm -hmm. stand around and do nothing. You actually are. It, it is, yeah. yeah. And then um, effort. Put an effort into what you do. Just don't do it half blank. You know, I mean, really put an effort in there. 
to um, be perfect. Not everybody's perfect, no. but at least you can make the effort to yes. be perfect. You know? Just, I agree. And another thing about effort that I'll say, just because you're putting the effort, you don't know that someone else is or what effort they're putting in. And this is something I struggle with. Everyone's not you. You are the only you. I think Dr. Seuss said that. Mm -hmm. You are the, there's no one youer than you. So That's don't right. expect people to work up to your level. Mm -hmm. Inspire them and empower them to do better. But remember, not everybody can be you. Right. I agree with that. Um, the next one is body language. Yeah. If you're all slipped down like this, you know, people's going to notice that. <laughs> you know, I've actually, though, straw. wait, though, because like, what about crossing your arms? I could see that in a positive way that you're engaged in a conversation and you're, you're focused, but then if someone can see it as being negative too. See, I guess that body language is difficult for me because if I'm relaxed and I'm listening to someone, I can definitely just see myself sitting in a meeting, just sitting, listening very attentively, but I may not ha be appearing to have the best body language. But I learned that some people listen best differently, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why I ask about crossing your arms. My mom always told us as kids, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything. And now I'm an adult. I can tell you. It means <laughs> nothing. But in meetings, I used to, that used to bother me when I would be conducting a staff meeting. So then I went to a leadership training and learned it's perfectly normal, right. you know? And especially, which I'm not going to get too much on this because I will talk about spiritual stuff forever but empathetic people mirror the body language often of others of the other i can see so that. in crossing your arms you know i often find myself just sitting like this and i don't depending on the situation i'm like oh no you shouldn't be doing that but i just think it's normal it's so, comfortable it's and it keeps me from fidgeting with my hands <laughs> just kind of use your best judgment yeah. in that i mean you know well and i think more body language you know like talking with your hands when people get to talking from emotion, they start to talk with their hands. Sometimes that can be aggressive. So depending on the conversation, your body language will vary. Right. And then you have energy. It's I everywhere. Think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depends on. So I say energy. I mean, again, I could talk about this forever, mm -hmm. but it, your energy, people can feel your energy. They can see it. And a big thing is your residents can feel it. So if you're not carrying a positive, good energy, got to do something, you know, right. meditate. Right. To me, I see energy as a good thing because I feed off of your oh, energy. Yeah. So yeah. we work hand in hand in hand with that. Attitude is... I never had one of those. <laughs> And the attitude, I, we need to remain um, positive mm -hmm. in this industry. That's back yeah. to the treat others the way you want to be mm -hmm. treated. You know, if you're flipping attitude every time someone asks you for something, they're not going to show you respect because you are not showing them respect. There are appropriate and appropriate time and place for everything. And a mm -hmm. poor attitude is not fit into the work industry at all. Right, right. And then passion. I think this is how you earn your most respect in our industry. Yeah. Let your passion shine. You know, I mean, there's no right. There's no wrong with passion. Mm -mm. If you see one of your residents sitting there, you know, it, you're, it's okay to go over there and spend a few moments oh, yeah. with them. You know, don't neglect another resident that you're attending to, but you can always say, hey, I'll be right back. Yeah. Drake, I'll, you know, let me take him to the dining room or to, to the restroom and I'll be back. You look like, you know, you need a few minutes. And when, it, when she says that, I want to go back, excuse me, something we talked about before. If you tell a resident you're going to be back in a minute, it better be a minute. Right. If you're going to be back in five, tell them five. A lot of our residents don't have anything better to do mm -hmm. when you walk away, but to sit there and watch the clock. So mm -hmm. if you say, hey, I'll be back in a minute. When that minute is expired, you have then let them down. Right. And they start to feel that. And those are the little things that add up, which will lessen your respect from the residents. So be reasonable. Mm -hmm. And I know some of my residents will look at me like I'm crazy. I'll be like, hey, I got to finish one thing. I'll be back in about seven minutes. You know, mm -hmm. I try to be back at five minutes, but that seven gave me that little grace period. So mm -hmm. be reasonable with them and be punctual. Right. 
The next is being coachable. I kind of like this one. Mm -hmm. You know, just don't shut your mind and your ears off. You know, stay, stay open. Um, listen to all the comments. You know, listen um, with an open mind, you know, and just be approachable. Well, in, in our industry is forever changing um, with regulations, let's just say there. So if you're not coachable to the new things, you will be behind. And then you're putting your residents at risk if you're not up to date or if you have not learned the new regulations and you're putting your facility at risk, your center at risk. So you have to know, I'd say in every industry, but especially the highest regulated industry, you have to be coachable. You have to be willing to learn and learn often because you will forever be learning as long as you decide to continue your career in healthcare. Right. I mean, I'm still learning after four oh, yeah. plus yeah. years. I'll yeah. always learn, you know, and, and grow. And then doing extra. You touched on this a few It almost goes ago. into every single one, mm -hmm. though. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my, uh, I need to wear that brown noser shirt today. Like, people be like, oh, you brown noser? No, I don't do extra because I'm trying to get attention. I don't do extra because I want a raise. I just do it because, for one, it makes you feel good. For two, mm -hmm. it makes you feel good. For three, it makes time go by faster. Stay right. busy, mm -hmm. stay productive. What's Lori's like? Um, execute and something. I can't forget, but I mean, I forgot what she says now. <laughs> Darn it! She would not be happy when she watches this. <laughs> but, Dang it! But then that goes back to number eight. You can be coachable. Yes. So yes. she can reach she out can, to you. <laughs> so you can... Oh, I'll go look at my computer right when I'm done and I'll only call. And the last one Focus is... Focus and execute. Yeah. That's what it was. The That's last one was. is uh, being prepared. You can practice and practice and practice being prepared for a certain event, but... <laughs> what, do you get there and you forget everything? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it is. So no matter what, just always try to um, prepare yourself what's going to happen. You know, yeah, make be, sure you're... Be prepared as best as possible, I'd say. Yeah. But then also be prepared for change. Yes. That's something that was difficult for me. I wanted to go into a building and I had my little work list and I wanted to just do what was there. Uh-uh. You need to make sure that you're prepared to alter your plan mm -hmm. because something's going to change. As much as you feel like you get in the same routine every day, something will change and it'll throw off your schedule. <laughs> but as long as you're prepared for that change, you will be great. All right. That's true. Because you never know what's going to happen. No, you don't. Coach Brown. Yep. <laughs> so until so until then. Um, until when? We meet again. <laughs> On the chill spot. <laughs> I think she, I said Code Brown and she said until then. I'm like, whoa. I think I'm, that, being, I'm being coachable. <laughs> all right. I think this was it. Um, so thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to CNA TV. We talked about it in the beginning. Subscribe, subscribe, share the videos, um, get notifications. And until next time, remember that CNAs matter. <laughs>